Hello everyone, Sean Carey with Migration Productions and thanks for joining us for another episode of The Natural World. Today, I'm gonna to take you on a little trip here to Southwest Florida to the Gulf Coast, just outside of Sarasota, to my favorite location in this area to photograph wildlife. And that is Mayaka River State Park. For those that aren't familiar with it, it's just off Interstate 75, uh, State Route 72, which is Clark Road. Uh, once you come off the exit, if you were heading uh, north on 75, uh, it would be about nine miles off the road. Um, get down to the uh, entrance to the park, it's just on your, on your left. Mayaka River State Park is about uh, roughly 37,000 acres. There are two areas of the park. There is the, the upper lake section, which is where the public uh, really has access to, which is where I'm at right now, and I'm along the banks of the Mayaka River. The upper lake is just up for me a couple hundred yards. This section here of the park uh, is where you know there's several campgrounds for for folks to camp at actually four log cabins that can be rented as well good hiking trails biking trails great for kayaking fishing uh, you get down to the very end where the boat ramp is uh, in that area there there's a concession and a gift shop that's there there's also a place where you can rent uh, canoes and bicycles in addition to that there is a, a boat ride that goes out into the upper lake so you can uh, take a boat ride out on the lake itself there's also a tram that runs that takes a, a little tour and kind of gives you some uh, guided information on the park and takes you off into areas where you can't drive onto so that's kind of cool thing to do in terms of other activities here there's the, uh, the canopy walk get up under this platform walk that takes you up into the canopy and you're actually looking above the tree line and you got this really spectacular view of the park there's a second road that kind of veers off just before you get to uh, the area where the concession and the bike rental and canoe rental and that sort of thing is. Uh, that road will take you out to the far end of the park. There's an area called the Bird Walk which goes out to a platform and gives you another view of the far end of the lake. And that's a good spot uh, for birders, bird watchers uh, to check out as well. I actually do some volunteering down there at the Bird Walk and I spend time uh, down here at the park. You know I've been visiting uh, Florida now for just over 30 years and I've been visiting the park uh, here in Mayaka, probably all, all going on about 25 years now, and have been participating in the Christmas bird count for probably that many years. And the great thing about uh, Mayaka River State Park, as far as I'm concerned, for those that are interested in birding, uh, wildlife viewing, wildlife photography, bird photography, is this is really a spectacular place uh, to, to photograph. The water level is just right, and, and I tend to like it a little bit lower. Uh, the, if the park is, uh, the water level is up real high or it's flooded, kind of disperses the birds, it's not very good. But when the water level is fairly low, um, it can be very good for, for bird photography. You can see and photograph every long-legged wader in Florida except for reddish egret. That's the only one you will not get here. But every other long-legged wading bird I've photographed here in the park. Kind of highlight of, of all those birds though has turned out to be over the years is, is limpkin. Right now as I came in up the area near the weir I counted about 50 limpkins. In this area here there's probably another 50 or so right here. Um, and just in this area off to my left there are 8, 9, 10, 11, there, there's a dozen right here, 13, one, another one out on the point, 14, another one flying in. So uh, 20 years ago or so, when I first started coming to the park and I participated in the Christmas bird count, you might see, I don't know, a dozen, 15, maybe 20 limpkins in this area. But there's an invasive snail and a uh, freshwater clam of some kind. And so with this invasive snail, the, the limpkin populations just exploded. This one just, just pulled one up and is coming up to feed, was what, which is what's going on here. All these birds are out here feeding first thing in the morning. If you see any of my photos, on my website or any of the videos that I've shot over the years. All those Limpkin photos are from here. And you know, any of my friends from up north that come down to visit or I've come down here and photograph with, uh, when they get down and they, they want to photograph Limpkins, this is where I take them. This is, this is the spot. Now you can certainly see Limpkins in other places, including up the road just a little ways at the celery fields. You can see them there as well. But I think the, for photography purposes, I believe that this is a much better location for photographing Limpkins. Plus you're going to get all these other uh, wading birds. I mean, just as a, a quick look here, I mean, as you know, great blue heron, great egret, snowy egret, little blue heron. A spoonbill. I'm sure there's a glossy ibis here somewhere uh, if I look hard enough. Uh, we got greater yellow legs. We've got black neck stilts, several black neck stilts. We got blue winged teal. I uh, had a white pelican in here yesterday. You know, cormorant. You'll get a hinga in here. Wood I had a wood stork first thing in the morning. There's been a snow goose that's been hanging around, which is kind of a wayward bird. I don't see snow goose here typically. There's a kingfisher that's working the uh, the power line here. 
So a really nice selection of, of birds. So I just want to talk just a little bit about some of the species in, in terms of the photography that I do here. So this area near the weir is where I really like to spend my time. And I typically find my spot, which I've done today. I set my tripod down, get my stool, sit down very low to the ground, wait, be very patient. I find that when you're patient and you wait, the birds kind of come to you. They get very acclimated to you. The nice thing about this location is the birds are very habituated to the human traffic here because you get a lot of people that are, again, photographers that are coming in here, uh, people that are coming here to fish, sightsee, wildlife view, you know, whatever the case is, the kayakers that come through. There's a limpkin's call in there. Love the call of the limpkin, by the way. Anyway, so these birds have become very habituated to the human uh, traffic that's here. And because of that, really kind of beneficial to photographers that they want to come here and photograph. And I'm actually going to put on my right angle viewfinder. That's the black neck stilt calling, by the way. Now this limpkin that's out on the point here, just went in, probably has one of these freshwater mollusk tail, just went into the grass, and kind of pick them up as they're out on the point here and try to f follow them in. And when they come up with clam or the, uh, or the snail, they can get a nice shot. And I like it when the foot is out of the water because uh, I like seeing that foot for that kind of action in the photo, just a little more dramatic. So if you can get that with the foot up, you know, again, the snail, or that, uh, that mollusk in its beak, that's kind of nice. And what these limpkins are doing is they're submerging their head completely in the water, probing, f finding the prey, bringing it up, and then walking it back to shore, and then they're opening it up and they're feeding on it. So that's how they typically do it. And that's what this one's just doing right here right now. Its head is completely submerged and it's probing. Black neck stilt is in a little bit closer to shore. Uh, it can't go out, uh, obviously, quite as far in the deep water. It just pulled up another one. So this is how quickly they're finding snails and or these, these mollusks. They're, they're pulling these things up rather quickly. They're bringing them in and feeding them. And again, that's why this population has exploded. In terms of some of the other species, you know, any of these wading birds, when, you, when I find one that's in an area, I like to just zone in on one particular bird and kind of work that bird. Uh, I find that to be most productive. If I find a bird that's preening, I will quite often kind of just forget everything else and try to lock in on a, on a preening bird because some of those preening shots when you have this nice smooth uh, water early in the morning I think makes for a very good photograph. Not to mention the fact that if you can kind of time it right and kind of size up your photo and make sure you give yourself enough headroom you might get that wing stretch on whatever the bird it is you're photographing that makes for a nice photo as well. So then you get some interaction between the birds particularly with the limpkins they tend to kind of want to I don't know jostle a little bit and it's kind of this activity where they'll jump up in the air and throw their feet at each other and it doesn't happen very long but uh, periodically particularly when you get a lot of them together for one reason or another it seems to be one that's always a little more aggressive than the other so some of the other species that can be found here that I wanted to touch on so this is a, a, oh here we go we got some glossy ibis coming in now there's four glossy ibis this area near the weir is one of the better places to photograph uh, black vultures and i know a lot of people for whatever reason aren't interested in vultures you know they think they're ugly and that sort of thing i really love photographing vultures you know you get both turkey vulture and black vulture here the the black vultures tend to be more approachable and in fact in many cases they will actually approach you they're very curious birds they'll come right up to you uh, i've been in many cases a little bit closer to the weir where a lot of them tend to congregate and they'll literally just surround me it's kind of interesting and they kind of have this grunting noise that they do and so i i've done these over the years these these really kind of portrait shots of the heads of these black vultures at, in different ages i just think they're really cool looking bird um so the the, the black vulture photography that down there can be very good you, you can also photograph turkey vulture in the park as well but they're not as approachable as the black vultures. They're definitely a little more skittish. Uh, in addition to that, kind of your default uh, beautio in the park is going to be a red-shouldered hawk. Lots of red-shouldered ha hawks in the park. Uh, there were a couple of them here first thing this morning when I got here, but closer to the weir. Uh, I'm not going to be surprised if I don't hear or see one at some point here this morning. Other birds of prey that can be seen in the park uh, to photograph would be a bald eagle. Uh, they, they do nest in the park. A barred owl in the park. Um, in fact, I heard a couple this morning. I won't be surprised if we hear another one while I'm sitting here. So you definitely can have barred owl here. Crested caracara in the park. Uh, in, in fact, in this area as well, but it's not very common. But outside the park, if you were on 72 going towards Arcadia, you, you have a fairly decent chance of seeing Kara Kara, particularly where you see some of the roadkill. You know, there's lots of these feral pigs here in the park, which are a real nuisance, a real problem. And when they're out on the roads, they get hit by vehicles. Uh, you'll see the vultures feeding on, on dead pigs or, or other uh, roadkill. And you quite often can find Kara Kara uh, at the roadkill. So you might want to keep an eye out for that. I haven't had a lot of luck with, with other raptor species. You will get Northern Harrier. There's been a gray ghost that's been kicking around. You will see Kestrel here. I've had Merlin here. I've had Peregrine Falcon. But in terms of photography, 
photography, that, that really has not been the, been the case so much, just more observations on my part. Uh, the real highlights again here are, are kind of the wading birds, the shore birds, good numbers of long-billed dowichers and least sandpipers and greater and lesser yellow legs, avocets, I've had avocets here. Uh, the stilts are the ones that have kind of stuck around a few greater yellow legs. The stilts don't have the problem with a little bit of higher water, obviously because how much taller a uh, shorebird they are. Numbers of killdeer is around in some of the, the open areas here as well. In terms of ducks, you're getting blue-winged teal, a hooded mergansers I've had here. You'll get, you know, mottled duck, green-winged teal in the past. You get pied bill grebe, common moorhens. So you, you can get a nice selection of, of birds here uh, in terms of waterfowl. I think the real highlight are, are definitely the wading birds. Anyway, there you have it. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, come on out to Mayaka River State Park, uh, bring your bicycle, bring your kayak, bring your fishing pole, whatever it is you want to do, have a good time, come on out. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you really like this video, please subscribe. And as always, remember, help protect wildlife and help protect wild places. Cheers. Okay, now we got to find some birds. Oh, this limpkin, oh, he's got something. More limpkins, more blue winged teal, good lord. There's a lot of birds here. That's the limpkins. How cool is that? Love the call of the limpkins. Love it, love it, love it. This is the place. <laughs> now we got an airplane. Got to shut it off. All right, see ya.